I mean, I feel the same way, yeah. A lot of students, every single day, they go through this, um, and they become very suicidal. That's why my program is to cater to um, teen suicides, because they cannot live the truth at home. Um, but this is so, so important. This is why it's important to like for me to see students' faces and for them to to be known and seen and to be seen and heard so that they're like, okay, well, this whole time I had done thought my mind tripping living with these people. <laughs> you know, a lot of people... I didn't go through that. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, a lot of people really... A lot of kids really think that, oh my God, you know, like I really thought that I was like literally insane because... They told me that I had to be straight when, in fact, uh, that's not the case. And I don't know how to break it to them. So tonight, I just wanted to clear the air about what is right view in regards to this matter um, that everyone is having such a dilemma with you and other students having such a dilemma um, on the subject. So first and foremost, we are here because... Our parents had done what they did out of desire. That's why we're here, right? We can all agree on that biological aspect um, that is true. of human behavior. Okay. Um, so when I give talks like this, I usually say, well, you know, we were these very happy sperms swimming around. Obviously, we didn't drag a laptop with us as we were swimming. And then we got bored one day and sent a text message and said, can you all conceive? Because now is a great time for me to come out into the world and stuck paying bills for the remaining balance of my 80 natural life years. So it's a it's somewhat of a fair game, uh, which is they did what they did. Now we're here. They are. Their obligation by law is to raise you until you're 18. Mm hmm. I like to add the school of Jidao asserts they should raise you till you're 25, since sometimes all the way up to 30 before you are off on your own. Okay. Be because research because research tells us that they're still adolescent until the, the brain is fully developed at 25. Mm -hmm. Statistically, but I've also seen students sometimes don't really break out of their shell until like in their like early thir you know like approaching late 20s. So in their like you know 29 years old it. Mind you, the Buddha, the Buddha done left at uh, 29 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. Six. 29 plus six is 35. Good. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be embarrassing if I got my numbers wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, now, now. Now. Now we hold people responsible for, for what's happening here. Oh, you can see Venerable Lee, too. He's sitting there chilling. All right. <laughs> uh -huh. The teachings of the Buddha has been around 2,566 years old. That's a really long time. That meant that your parents, my parents, everybody's parents, had the opportunity to discover the Dhamma, to discover the, the Four Noble Truths about their suffering in life, and what constitutes suffering, which is desire. Some people were not, not some people were born gay. Mm -hmm. Right? And the best available science we have behind LGBTQIA plus has been published for Lord knows when. Year, uh, uh, decades after decades after decades about when they first thought being gay, lesbian, LGBTQIA+, was a mental illness. Then they dispelled that alarm and they said, oh no, it's not mental illness. Okay? And the many celebrities that have come forward that says, yeah, yeah, I've been gay the whole time, I've been in the closet the whole time, and now it's a great time to tell all y'all I'm coming out of the closet. Um, so, it's like, they chose ignorance. They willfully, knowingly, and intentionally turn a blind eye away from science, away from the publishing, from the publishers, which is newspapers. I mean, all this literature is available quite fairly openly and readily accessible for free to the public. How did they not know? 
They don't read, I guess. And <laughs> hey, that's not your problem. No, no, it is not. <laughs> right, right. Now you get to hear my tone, which is I hold everyone responsible. I don't, I don't, I don't feel bad. I don't take sides. It's about responsibility. Isn't that what life is all about? Mm. And so this is how you start that type of conversation is that, yeah, so uh, let's, let's, let's have this open conversation because uh, quite frankly, you know, I, I don't want to dodge you and you obviously don't want to dodge me. We're a family. We're supposed to be happy, healthy together. And part of happy, healthy is open communication. Mm. Um, open communication means loving kindness, compassion, and deep understanding. Keyword, deep understanding. <laughs> And part of deep understanding is that one has to know the number one, the scientific literature, because that is the closest to the truth that we have about the human condition. Okay. Uh, that's how we are able to live in a healthy way and kind of know like, oh, okay, well, I mean, if research says this, then obviously it's normal. Um, and, and likewise, the application of research into criminology, into medicine, into law, I mean, you know, judges and all of them make scientific decisions based on scientific literature about, you know, who is not right in the head or, and how do we re rehabilitate them instead of just throwing them life in prison. Okay. Uh, um, so I just want you to fully understand the, the how to emphasize part of open communication, deep understanding is to the appreciation of the lit literature that has been available for so long. Um, and basically, you want to tell them, like, look, I know y'all really hoping for me to get a man and go forth and multiply, like the Bible says. It, about, you know, behind me, there's a cross. So, you know, I used to be Catholic my, my, myself. And do y'all get that, um, that I'm not set up that way? to want a man, to love a man, and and do the man and woman thing, the dance, <laughs> to where a baby pops out, and then I have to pay child support for 18 years uh, without any guarantee that the child will be a return on investment for the remaining balance of my natural living cycle. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, right? That's just keeping it to the point, straight, dead, dead on point, okay? Um, that's not sugarcoating anything. And just, just to be real. Furthermore, to emphasize that I like women. Or I like men. Or I like both. Or I, you know, I think using I statements and using statements of, you know, it makes me feel this way when I don't, I, I perceive that you guys are not listening, that you guys don't care. Um, I think as a family, we love each other. We should we, we should be open to what the science says about this and to understand where I'm coming from, that I suffer greatly. Um, and that sometimes maybe I don't want this, but I'm set up this way. So I am going with what my body needs, uh, what it wants to nurture. Uh, and I'm just trying to make it. I'm just trying to get by, just like the rest of y'all. But you see how real that sounds, you know? Yeah. Genuine, straight to the point. Uh, and again, it's trying to help them understand where you are coming from as a struggling uh, woman in your 20s. Mm. That basically educating them about the first noble truth in a 20 year old Gen Zoomer sense. <laughs> it is true, right, and just that you, you are trying to get by trying to pay bills, trying to be nice to yourself and to other people in the midst of your own hormonal struggles. In the midst of a natural human desire to be love and to love. Ah, So, you know, LGBTQIA plus Pride Month just passed by and you are aware of my continuous application for LGBTQIA plus. Yes, I liked every single one of them. <laughs> And a lot of people, you know, make threats to me all the time and, you know, tell me all sorts of mean things. And I really don't care. I have developed a thick skin over time 
to deal with the secular world that thinks dif differently. You know, I'm going to go to hell. Um, it should be man and woman. It should be Adam and Eve, not Adam and Adam and Eve and Eve. And I I've heard it all. <laughs> <laughs> but it is my continuous adamant advocation because love is love. At the end of the day, love is love. And why should we define love based on body parts? Mm. So people are quite attached on to body parts. And what makes a woman a woman? What, because she got titties? <laughs> Apparently. Apparently, right? And what makes a man man? Because he has a penis? Right? And so it, like, hello? Are we missing the big picture of what love is and what encompasses love, true love? Love for another human, love thy neighbor. Like, hello? Hello? And um, I think that if you expand on the four noble truths, um, the first noble truth that, look, mom, look, dad, look. In life, you all agree that there are suffering, the existence of birth, old age, disease, decay, and death. Some of y'all midlife crisis. We all went through birth, thank God. We're born with <laughs> eyes, ears, nose, and everything else. We're decaying every day. We're aging every day. So what is the point of not accepting this great teaching and to operate on this universal platform of understanding and acceptance, ultimately acceptance? Then you emphasize the suffering, which is y'all wanting me to be straight when I'm not straight and I can't be straight will in turn cause suffering for y'all because the Buddha done had said, not getting what you want causes suffering. And you give examples. Like every day, um, wanting something and not getting it is suffering. Like ice cream when it's closed. You can't get ice cream, so you suffer. And, not, and, and getting something that you don't want, like a flat tire, mm. is suffering. Wanting a straight daughter <laughs> and not getting a straight daughter causes suffering. Or well, isn't that where we are at? So, knowing how to suffer, one suffers less. Ah. Uh, the other thing is to encompass a life and legacy on the parental responsibility, which is how do y'all want to be remembered as parents? How do y'all want to be remembered as the loving Christian parents that you are? Isn't it all God's people? How will you face judgment day? Because you yourself judge. You yourself did not forgive and ask for forgiveness. Mm. So if they're Christian, you turn the Bible back on them. <laughs> That's and it. do some self-reflection. Right. So that they're like, uh, you know, is this, is this a Christian thing to do? And what did the Catholic Church started to do? You said they were Catholic, right? Yes. Well, they have also changed their doctrine and what the Pope had done recently said. Didn't he, like, recently say, that, like, it's not his place to judge or something like that? They started to be more inclusive. Oh, okay. Versus yeah. ex exclusive because they were losing so many followers and so many, you know, people going to, you know, uh, attendees, you know. So, again, it, it not, not even notwithstanding, not even notwithstanding the Catholic Church in Rome, parents are gods. Matter of fact, every human is a god because, you know, if you want to be a god, all you have to do is go out and get a 38 or AR-15 and you become god very quickly. <laughs> that, is, that is the truth. Right. So it's like, how do you want to be remembered as the modern day Christian parents or the modern day American parents? Do you want to be known for the judgmental type of people that you are, that they are? Or do you want to change the course of history and inspire other families, inspire other Christian families or whatever families out there to be more flexible and less rigid 
as being flexible brings greater joy, peace, happiness, and liberation for all involved. Rather than this stick that doesn't move and anything that is stiff will subsequently break. It will break the entire unity of the family. Yeah. So if you use these type of rhetoric words and words of persuasion as it, it is reflect the truth of the human condition, then hopefully their heart is moved. What we want here is their heart to move. If their heart is moved, then they will change. They will reconsider. Yeah. They, will re they will consider the facts, the findings of facts, and the conclusion of science, the conclusion of the teachings of the Buddha, and what society is now so welcoming with the LGBTQIA plus community mm. and how we are always under constant attack, psychological attacks, physical attacks, um, being discriminated, like who wants, these are bows and arrows, the Buddha would say, of setting your child free into the world and they have to endure these bows and arrows. So parents are supposed to act as a shield and to be the helping hands in catching these bows and arrows so that it does not penetrate the tender heart of the youth. Mm. And I don't mind counseling them. And, you know, if quite frankly, if you find it difficult in facilitating this conversation or the start of this conversation, then you said, look, I had done turn Buddhist because it's quite chill and it's less guilt. And I'm wondering if y'all would be open to sit down and talk with this great monk named Venerable Chidao so we can grow closer, happier, and healthier as a family as a whole. So yes? Yes. That would be an interesting conversation. <laughs> I love that though. Right. So you have to think of all these ingenious ways. And you may have to write it down and brainstorm and um so that uh you know um they so that it helps you better prepare the conversation ahead it's a big conversation it's not easy it's easy for me because i've been doing it for so long right but it's hard for you guys because you guys not every family is perfect and you choke up you have all sorts of physiological responses when you try to and then of course the history of everyone's temperament and character mm. nature style and disposition of each human in the family right um but yeah these these are my typical recommendations for situations like that that, that you've that you've you know ra um, raised earlier in yeah. the conversation any questions so far no i i mean that's kind of like what was going what I was kind of going through in my own head when I was thinking throughout the week about it, it was more of just like mentally preparing myself for how I, I can always be surprised. My parents are pretty good at like surprising us every once in a while with their responses. Cause you kind of like expect a certain response out of them and then they do a 180. Mm. Um, my parents have, history of voicing their opinions on situations very similar to this of close family friends of ours and so I would kind of expect the same response but you know they always say it's a whole different story when it's happened to you personally then it's different than just making a judgment about something that doesn't personally affect you so yeah I don't know maybe it would go better yeah and a therapist could also help this conversation too um, LGBTQIA plus oriented therapist and a a any MFTs, um, um, which is a marriage family therapist behind their name, MFTs behind their names. You would want to look up on psychologytoday.com to look for a good, you know, if, if your parents or family is therapy oriented in the Western psychology arena, then that could also be a possible avenue to explore um, and start that conversation. Yeah, that would, um, I would enjoy it, like, because I have a feeling like if I, when I give them this news, it's gonna, like, really mess up the whole family unit kind of situation, so I would, um, 
be interested in kind of offering that and seeing if they would want to take it. Because I don't know if I might just not hear from them anymore. So that's kind of like where I'm at. Well, let's pre- let's also prepare for the worst. Let so let yeah. me give you the the preparation for the worst. If they do not accept this and not receptive to the this news, right? Then prepare yourself for two things that the Buddha prepared us for, which is, do you remember what they are, Venerable Lee? I'd rather walk alone than walk with a fool, and I'd rather walk alone because not everyone lasts forever. Oh. <laughs> I rather walk alone than to walk with fools. What was the other one? I'd rather walk alone because not everyone lasts forever. Oh, that's what happened when it's nighttime. I'd rather walk alone because not everyone lasts forever. Oh, I'm starting to have dementia. Yeah, <laughs> now you're too young for that. <laughs> uh, spiritually old. Um, <laughs> physically not old, but spiritually old. I was at a monastery. The pictures that I sent you of all four of us, yeah. and I was teaching the four protective. The only four, four protective meditation function, and I forgot the first one, which is meditation on the Buddha. And I was just like, I'm, I'm gonna resign. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I this is the one thing that I am so so adamant about. Meditation on the nine qualities of the Buddha, and here I am in a crowded setting at a Thai temple. And then I, I speak about it. I'm like, for protective meditation, it's found in the Visuddhi Maga, Path to Purification. And the first one is... <laughs> uh, we'll just move on to the second one. <laughs> you guys already know the first one. I don't even, t- I don't even but, go over that one again. But the novices, the novices haven't received that training. So they couldn't help me because they haven't gone through the, the text. Um, it's huge. It's like, it's hidden, it's hidden in here somewhere. Um, right to my right. All right, so, all right, so let's define the, the first and the second. Well, before I define that, right speech, is it true, is it necessary, is the timing right, is it beneficial for everyone that is involved? Mm-hmm. So that's right speech. So I'm not sure how you looked up right speech or its elements, but these are the four elements. Is it true? Is it beneficial? Is the timing correct? Did I miss anything? Hold on, dementia is coming in. Alright, hold on. Is it true, true right. correct, right, beneficial for everyone that's timing. involved? Timing. Yeah, the timing. So those are typical four universal elements fall under um, the right speech in the noble way full path. You can't beat yourself up if you fall short from those four elements because timing, like, who the hell has time? That is true. <laughs> and the Buddha has already said that the problem is we think that we have time when we in fact don't. So you try to be as skillful as you can. Obviously, don't choose nighttime when they're like working all day, 12-hour shift, and be like, hey, excuse me, hi, how are you? Um, today, Tonight's a great night for me to tell y'all that I'm gay. <laughs> um, like really gay. And then like give everyone a heart attack. And that's a guaranteed trip to see Jesus that night. You know, right? <laughs> High blood pressure, possible stroke, aneurysm during sleep. Yeah, no. So, of course, you know, you want to, like, take them to the park, perhaps, you know, a picnic and sit and see the waters or perhaps a calm lake and ease into the conversation. You can you can do cues and clues way before you ease them into a conversation, not drop the bombshell. I mean, there's many ways to do it. A therapist and myself and or myself can help you plan this out so that it's a gradual desensitization technique for them. Mm, Okay. Rather than, so it's a desensitization technique is the same thing with people with fear um, of, let's say Venerable Lee is afraid of a snake. So, you know, um, obviously don't like grab a snake and be like, (laughs) he would die. He would have an instant heart attack and die. Um, desensitization technique would involve, all right, well, let's close our eyes and imagine a snake. Okay? <laughs> and then gradually tell him that there is the possibility of a snake outside the door. And then the introduction of a real snake at the door when he's like a mile away in the room. 
and then we inch it closer closer by by every session and that session can take a whole year if need be as appropriate deem adjudicated by the therapist skillfully and as they are trained with desensitization techniques um and according to apa standards and you know you know again one who is not skillful can really um do more harm than good so same same concept with certain the timing of um the timing and coordination of easing into that perhaps perhaps making them aware of the literature aware of certain policies by the church psychological research on psychologytoday.com perhaps the mm. such introduction or asking them about hey do you guys what do you guys think about or find politics they all they got to have core values and beliefs so you find it by you know hey you know let's have a drink or let's eat together and they'll be like so what are your guys political views what do you got you know you play around with them like what's your views do you like trump you don't like trump do you like biden biden sucks or trump sucks or everybody sucks <laughs> or or you love or you love Trump or you love Biden I don't know who cares, and like so um I was wondering uh, what are your views on abortion what are your views on LGBTQIA plus, and you hear it play out and so you're picking their brains, yeah to understand their standpoint. Mm. so you're like CIA of their mind, and then when they're like oh hell no they all gonna burn in hell. And that's when you realize, okay, well, I know when and where to approach um, or report back to the venerable. Because obviously, this is not going to be good. Okay, all right, moving on, moving on, moving on. Past right speech. I'd rather walk alone than walk with fools. Obviously, somewhere down the line, you have to adjudicate rightfully so. True, right, and just. That if they reject everything that I have previously said in this recorded live recording that they are a fool mm. what is a fool a fool is someone who does not understand the four noble truth a fool is someone who reject turn a blind eye within the medical literature and in the details of the uh, uh, the scientific and medical literature is that they have done statistical data and again it is subject for replication of getting the same results and it is closest to the truth that we have in modern day science of humanity so that we understand okay well th this is it and this is closest to it as it can possibly get with this hypothesis <laughs> with the the scientific method uh, again i've every standard that i have laid out in the beginning is metric and checklist to rule out whether a person is the wise or a fool. Mm. A fool is someone who just entertainment, don't care about family values, don't care about uh, healthy family systems and unit, parenting skills. All, again, all of the science behind parenting skills, all of the science behind um, responsible parenting and so on. So it's just like all the science been around for decades. Where were you? Where were you for me when I needed you the most? You were supposed to be my protector. Mm. So you find it. You be a lawyer. You have my permission to be a lawyer. And you find it. Because I'm telling you, I'm, I'm teaching all of my students to be lawyers. When you adjudicate them as a fool, you are a judge. When you have to advocate for your own peace, you are a lawyer. Rightfully so. I wear many hats in my entire life. I've been a judge before. I've been a lawyer before. To ensure my own peace. Yeah. You know? Um, and, and it's okay if they walk away from you or they want to take a break from you. Um, one of the doctors that I work here, who so happens to be gay, with his partner, his family rejected, and he took a 20-year break. And the physician that I work with, he, he, he's in his 60s. And this is way back in the day. And I said... You took 20 year break from your family. And he said, yeah. And after 20 years, they realized they didn't want this anymore. But he said it in such a calm and serene way. And I was like, <laughs> 20 consecutive concurring years. 
Wow. Maybe it was peaceful for him. <laughs> exactly. And he literally stood by his choice with his partner and can care less of what they think. And took and he took that break willfully, knowingly, and intentionally and voluntarily. Yeah. So so the the one question I asked you earlier was are, are how dependent are you? Um how dependent are you financially? Because typically when you have financial attachments, then it's harder to have confidence because you're dependent. You don't want them to take that away from you. You don't want them to take away love from you, money from you, or whatever, support. The existence of support, um, intrinsic, extrinsic support away from you. So therefore, it's fear -based, it, it compounds fear-based and you don't want to, to do it. But if it sits heavy on your heart and it, on your mind, the acceptance that I'm just going to break the news one day, um, following as much guidance as I can. And if they say no or turn a blind eye or not accept me anymore, I'm okay with that. I'm chill with that. And it's comforting borrowing the teachings of the Buddha to realize that some people can be fools for a while until they become wiser by the days. Yeah. And not everyone lasts forever. I'd rather be alone because they won't last forever. And that's true too. You should never be attached onto anyone. Not to me, not to your partner, not to anyone. At the moment of death, if you want to excel in this tradition and actually fall under sainthood by virtue of extinguishment of greed, anger, and delusion, then you cannot be attached onto anything, not to yourself, not to your partner, not to money, not to ideas, concepts, ideologies, values, core beliefs, then you will become a full-fledged saint, an arahant, a fully enlightened being. So that's pretty cool too. And I live by that. And I, I myself have kicked my parents out of the house and I have been kicked out of the house like a dozen times. So it was like walking the park for me and they're like, get out. And I was like, it's already packed. I've been prepared. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> you know? So I've been homeless. I've been homeless three times in my life. I've lost everything in my life three times. People really mistaken my smile. And they're like, well, you look like the most joyful monk in the world. Yeah, it's true inner joy, happiness. But it was rough in, in my in my 20s. Like you. Like you in, <laughs> right? Makes sense so far? Yeah. Any concerns so far? Not really, like, everything you're saying makes sense. It's just the nerves of the conversation and, you know, trying not to, like, you know, already place expectations on, you know, because maybe I'll be surprised, you know? Who knows? Yeah, and the uh, other, other thing about cognitive behavioral therapy is not jumping to conclusions. Mm. Or play the fortune telling games, which is anticipating their moves when they are who they are. They're going to take it the way that they're going to take it. I can only prepare you so much until, you know, that the news kind of like settles in for them. And that's kind of like how I've been. I've been reading that chapter a lot because I don't want to psych myself up because I used to be, uh, like in high school, I would think of how this conversation would go and I would freak myself out so much that I would end up just not saying anything and just basically freaking myself out. So is it putting words in their mouth before they even had a chance to say anything? Hmm. Mm. What's a week in the midst of our lives and or the changes in every day of our lives and we really hope that they understand where we're coming from or you can put it in writing you can actually put it in writing and then give it orally and then give them here i or just anticipate and then as soon as you get the the reaction that you knew they were going to do that's when you say you know what i knew i'm deeply hurt by your reaction And I hope somewhere down the line, you will find it in your heart to reconsider your 
core beliefs and standpoint. So therefore, I took the enormous effort of writing these 12 pages to you all to read. Then we move to death meditation, which is, you know, isn't it funny that people listen once someone dies? But they have to die for other people to listen. But yet, and then they miss them, right? Because it's funny how people misses people when they die. But yet when they were still alive, you didn't miss them. You didn't fully appreciate a living, functioning, healthy human being when they were still around. So let your life not be a life of regret. And hopefully you make the right decision. And then you give them the letter. <laughs> Read this when you feel like it. Yeah, you know, Bri, I have become very deep over the past decade of my life. I grew up as an introvert, angry little child, explosive. No idea how to use words to explain my emotions, thoughts, and feelings. And then as I went through the enormous, gigantic, deep hurt and pain of adolescence, I became more philosophical and... <laughs> 22 years of reading and studying and notes as high as the ceiling made me become this like little young philosopher that you see that now you see how I can literally twist someone's heart. Be Just words. <laughs> because that's the truth. That's the truth about how I feel right now. If I was in your shoes and if I had to take on that great task of expressing just great task and it's like uh, people don't understand the enormous suffering and pain that we have to go through just to come up with the right words just to feel accepted yeah so i just hope that they are emotionally intelligent and socially intelligent and parentally intelligent and humanly intelligent to put your needs and to be considerate of your emotions and your human experience in the process. So I don't know them. I don't have any prior information about them to even gauge the minute sense of how they would take it of each words that I am expounding and teaching and perhaps in influencing you to use the same similar vocabularies. Yeah, like... Um... I definitely like how you talked about how, you know, you're really just going in and you're going to, you know, I'm going to express, you know, how I feel and like how it makes me feel when I feel like I can't be that way and because I don't want to make them uncomfortable and, but I want to have this new, I want to have a real relationship with them because I don't right now. I don't, they don't, they don't know that, but I know that. Authenticity, <laughs> so. yeah, authenticity. Yeah. The other thing is to also have imp the, okay, back to you, back to me training you to be a lawyer. <laughs> Part of your training is the teachings on impermanence, which is at this time in my life, I don't find men amusing. <laughs> I don't find them attractive, amusing. Um... What's the word? Um, I apologize for everyone that's watching because I have to switch mode from monk to therapist and relationship expert. <laughs> 84,000 <laughs> teachings back to now Western psychology. Uh, compatible right now in my life, at this time in my life, and you have to emphasize, you have to, to keep their mind still there because it's going to jump. And you tell them, look, keyword, at this time in my life. I don't feel comfortable with men. Uh, I don't feel compatible with men. Uh, it's not what my body is dictating, um, steering me right now. And I got to go with the boat. And the boat tells me I want to go with women. So therefore, maybe perhaps a couple years down the road when my brain is fully developed and my hormones are situated, I perhaps will fall head over heels for a big, tall, white healthy man okay or make it funny you know and then they realize okay all right well 
okay, well, she does make sense. I mean, she's hasn't reached 25 yet. Right? Uh, I'm about to be 27. <laughs> Whatever. Impermanence. <laughs> Whatever. Impermanence. Impermanence says... Impermanence says that everyone is subject to change. So I had really thought you were like 24. So... <laughs> Uh, because okay, I forgot how old I was a couple days ago too. Because, because most of the most of the age group is falls within the twenty four round, but so you know, like perhaps when I am more situated in my life, perhaps when I'm more economically sound or hormonally sound, um, and as time goes by, you know, people get bored, and research tells us, yeah, you know, people fluctuate and change all the time. Uh, but the emphasis on impermanence of the human condition and human desire helps to make your case more easy. Right. I can't tell you how many times, because I have gay friends, and uh, and I have, uh, they're so funny. They're all fun. I love all of them. Um, and I would, some of my friends are scholars, scholars and doctors and lawyers, and I'm like, straight huh um and i would make jokes with them and i'm like straight women huh straight boys huh straight men straight girls straight gay girls gay men huh and they're so funny they're like they ain't really straight <laughs> and i was like <laughs> y'all need to stop you all are scholars don't play with me um and basically they would cite research that says people are fluid Oh, yeah. Everybody's on a spectrum. Right. So, again, you, if you find the right research that um, that you can use as part of your debate and speech, I think it will be comical and funny for everyone involved. It doesn't have to be serious. I mean, look at how much you've laughed since I've started this conversation. Yeah. Instead of crying and we're filled with anxiety and depression, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. Um you know, so I, I, hopefully this talk tonight helps you find a, to help you find a good voice, a voice that you probably perhaps needed some empowerment yeah. to construct, to push forward a little bit more. You should never have to live this way, especially at 27. And it, it is crazy because um, definitely going through the CBT program helped me be a lot more comfortable with this because mm. this would not have been my whole mentality mm. pre that <laughs> it would have i probably would have been crying um but i'm like i'm it's weird like at this point no no matter what the outcome is i'm i'm comfortable with who i am and what i stand for and you know, I know that whatever, I don't have control out of over how they respond and I shouldn't allow their response affect me because I don't have, I can't control that. I can't control what they're going to do or say. I can only control my own actions. So, right. yeah, I just need, I just need to know like the best way to go about it, really. And you got it. And you may have to listen to this talk again. Mm. Just so that you get the more precise words slow it down a little bit what did he just say again and then you try to craft you know you you reconsider it and um so hopefully i i you know um did this conversation justice at 10 o'clock at night um <laughs> uh, lately a lot of local students here has been requiring my attention as their life also changed in their own relationships and um, and so they, you know, they, they kidnapped me. So I had no choice but to go where they request me um, for teachings and to see what's happening. And, you know, I think you and I have been phone tagging about, I can't do this day, we do it next day. I can't do it this time, we do it next time. And I felt I felt a little guilty. And I'm like, oh, you know, Bree's been waiting this whole week to, to talk. And so I was just like, I think Venerable Lee here was looking at the anxiousness in my eyes to try to wrap it up. And some students tonight, they were off topic. And I had to reel them back in and conclude the tonight's talk. 
and the quality of the talk. I just don't want to like shoot people away. I want to like end it on a note where they understand where I'm coming from, that it needs to fall under the lens of the Buddha and stay on point. Okay, I got to go. I got to go talk to Brie. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 no, I, I always I always know that you have a lot on your plate and you're talking to a lot of people, helping a lot of people. So if you don't answer, I always assume you're helping somebody and you'll call me when you have a chance. And it is exactly instances like this that gives me a sense of urgency because I never know. Oh, so much can happen in one day, nonetheless, a whole week, Bree. That is true. A lot can happen. Mm-hmm. And if I, and I, I, you know, I made sure that I wouldn't spiral by constantly reading the CBT book and looking back on it and looking at my notes and keeping my head calm, keeping that inner peace going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was it was weird. It was like a weird nostalgic week that came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. So we, we can continue the discussion. Let me see here. It's only 10, 12. Um, did you have any questions on your assignments uh, besides this right speech? Anything, any other thing that you, in your notes, your journals, or in your readings, any questions on the aggregates? And I don't know, last time we had another venerable that explained, he kind of like went around like this, and I was <laughs> like, okay, um, I'm going to take jurisdiction of this talk now. <laughs> you all are relieved from explaining, because uh, they're in training, so that's why I say they're in training. So, so, uh, so uh, And they're very passionate about the teaching. And sometimes they're stuck on uh, the first or second noble truth. Uh, so as we're discussing the aggregates, they just jump to the noble truths and uh, like, um, <laughs> let me fill everyone back in for a second. So I think that was fun for you because then you're, you're like, oh, all right, good, good perspective. <laughs> <laughs> it was a speed quiz. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I loved the passion because I was trying to, like, I was really invested. Like, I loved his talk and he was, and the passion he was getting for, like, a great public speaking. And I was trying to keep up with it as it went. I was like, oh, I remember that. Like, oh, yeah, I remember him talking about that. <laughs> but you should see, because this is the first time we're doing this FaceTime. I really like the FaceTime. But you should have seen his passion as he was explaining. He was literally talking in front of the phone. and Just like the seriousness in the face and everything as I walked back in because I can hear it. It's, it's on speaker so I can monitor it. And I'm walking back and forth room and I was like, whoa, it's all right. It's not that deep. I, I She's eventually going to get it. And he was trying to push through the, the, the examples of it. And I, yeah, it's the passion of, of the teaching. And I was like, oh man, all right, you guys are good because they don't know what to expect. They're emerging young teachers in training. So they also have a lot of anxiety that I'm monitoring and they don't want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think I think uh, as he gets more practice, it's going to be great because he definitely has all the passion to like teach it to people, for sure. Yeah. My favorite part was when he just kept saying, it's all a scam over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you have any follow-up questions on on what was explained last week or any readings this week so far i could tell this was with this i could tell that this was preoccupation in your mind um for this week's for today yeah like i i kind of neglected um a lot of the uh aggregate readings this week when i was kind of this i I was actually planning on continuing on that and then that this just came out of nowhere and it just kind of like took over my brain so uh, this week, I'm probably going to get back into listening to some more of the teachings on the aggregates and really trying to nail that down. Because I, I definitely gathered a lot more from our last week's conversation, but I kind of want to make sure I understand at least the, the basic premises behind it. Like, I know it's kind of like something that takes a while to fully grasp, but I want to make sure I at least can like explain it to somebody else to some extent if uh, they were ever to ask kind of thing. Mm. Okay, very good. Sometimes like the aggregates or the 12 links of dependent origination doesn't make sense right now. But as you progress and you touch up on other teachings, it will help piggyback or it will ease you in closer to the full comprehensive understanding of the two most difficult thing to understand. Um, it's concept 
and its functions in everyday experience. So um, you just have to be a little bit patient with it as your mind is trying to construct a bridge so that all the information flow smoothly into the understanding of it. It's the aggregates. It's one of the hardest thing to like, huh? Yeah. Form, yeah, feeling, I mean, perception, what? Consciousness. <laughs> and it's interesting listening to different teachers kind of explain a little bit different each time. So it's like everybody kind of has their own unique interpretation of it. So trying to make my own interpretation out of all their interpretations. So I might also kind of break it up a little bit by going back to some of the basic noble truth teachings just to kind of make sure I have that all down too. Kind hmm. right. of give my brain a break. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, <laughs> there, there was a, a sentence that I have to go back and find. As I was looking up the environment and the teachings of the Buddha, I came across one that was really good in about talking about the aggregate. They literally summarized the entire five aggregates in two sentence Ooh. that's that any 10 year olds can understand i would like that two sentences that a 10 year old can understand so i have to go back to my search and dig it back up I'll, I'll dig it back up so many wonderful articles and it's the articles that has been written by other buddhists about the explanation of the five aggregates that you will find your answers the quickest okay. also also try the chat gpt thing i haven't i need i need to play with that chat gpt thing and see and I'm going to challenge um, some things. I'm going to ask it like, you know, like as if I'm a 10 year old and see if it's come up with quick, easy, concise, to the point answers. Because, you know, as kids, kids want answers right away, like quick, fast, easy, easy to understand. Like, OK, I get it. Trying to explain things to a 10 year old is not an easy task. <laughs> I've tried that before. It's something way simpler. <laughs> yeah. Anything you'd like to add, Venerable Lee? She's doing a great job. Keep studying with diligence and she's doing a very good job. Yeah. All right. Well, we're making progress. As long as each week we're making progress and, you know, we're addressing some of these very important things as it relates to the human conditions right now. Your piece, your piece is priority. Mm. I, I, that's what I'm like really working at at this point is like kind of, I don't want to say kicking out things that aren't giving me peace because that sounds kind of aggressive but it's kind of like the concept yeah. like what you said you don't uh what was it you'd rather walk alone than walk with fools i like that i hadn't heard that before mm -hmm. um yeah there's there's like some small books that give you little jolts of uh teachings like like that they basically summarize they took some of the most potent things the buddha have ever said and put it in little, very small, easy to read books. And those are the things that is worth reading on a daily basis to reflect on. And it helps you make better, more confident choices and you stand by them to ensure your own peace. Because mm. asking you to discount your family, discard your family, suspension and separation from your family is the hardest thing ever to do. Because it's like this umbilical cord is still there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it can be done. It can be done. Um, it, it seems impossible and it hurts a lot in the moments of execution of such uh, decision. But I'm telling you, if to, if to ensure your own health and peace and peace of mind and clarity of mind, sometimes you have to do what needs to be done. said that too do what needs to be done study what need to be studied and practice what need to be practiced mm, yeah. so uh we shall reconvene it's up to you uh, if you want you know more time this week to talk about this or to touch upon the teachings of the buddha uh, i know that this is a lot of information that's why i recorded it for you for you to re re reflect and revisit during the week um as we're continuing to make gradual progress towards your anticipated conversation yeah and i might um depending on i'm gonna like do your idea like writing down like kind of like a speech of what i would want to say and maybe like some time later in the week we could kind of like talk about maybe i could send you like a screenshot of what it is and like 
see if it's like an approach like i'm going in the right direction or if i'm just gonna make a mad kind of thing yeah mm -hmm. have fun with it <laughs> have fun with it yeah throw some jokes in there yeah it's like it's the best way so it's like as if she's sitting right in front of me i get a kick out of technologies so <laughs> i agree take care you have a good night over there okay yeah same to you right. thanks bye-bye Oh, that was a that was a deep talk. I had to like put my mind into certain gears for that one, just because that's a life changing talk for students. Okay, all right. So let me see here. Oh, okay, all right. a lot of people were very inspired by this talk. So yes, I invite you all to share it and um, with your loved ones. Okay, take care.